Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about how to embed content into Canvas. And to begin our exploration of this topic, we're just going to jump right into a Canvas course that has a lot of embedded content in it. So this is my page. It's called Embed Content into Canvas. I'm going to maximize our screen here and we're just going to walk through. So I have different sections. The first section, and I'll have a title and then I have some boilerplate text and then we'll have the embedded content here. And so this first section is a sway. And the sway allows me to have this interactive component onto my screen where I can cycle through pictures, I can sort through the pictures manually, or I can just go through the sway sequentially. And it's a very interactive component to Canvas and an interesting effect. And so in addition to embedding a sway, I've also embedded a Padlet into my course. I use Padlet to share information with my students, let them learn about me and maybe about my interests. I usually showcase my family in there and all things Disney. And so I use this for an introduction assignment so that we can get to know each other in the class, but I also have them create Padlets throughout the term with course content and deliverables. And sometimes I'll have them embed their Padlets into their discussion posts. Sometimes I'll have a Padlet that is a collaborative Padlet that the class works on together and I'll embed that into an assignment page. There are a lot of applications for these platforms. Another one is ThingLink. Here's an example of ThingLink embedded. Now ThingLink allows you to upload an image and put hotspots onto the image so students can navigate around and they can have the content. In this case, it's a 360 image. And so the students can navigate around and they can access the various content. So I have that right on my Canvas page. Another one is Edpuzzle. If you use Edpuzzle, then you can take a YouTube video and you can have students play it and then you can have questions or content that pops up on the screen. So it makes it a little bit more interactive. Here's an example of just embedding an image into Canvas. And I got this from unsplash.com. You can also use the Unsplash plugin when you insert an image using the rich content editor in Canvas. And if you like this effect, this is called a parallax effect. And we have an entire video dedicated to how to create this kind of interaction in your Canvas course. Here's an example of an interaction from H5P. And I can scroll around, navigate through this content. And so a benefit from using something like H5P is you can have these interactive components with drag and drops and videos, and you can have quizzes and just make the experience a little bit more interactive for your students. A lot of people are familiar with Prezi. Here's an example of a Prezi embedded onto a Canvas content page. And you can see that it's fully interactive and I can navigate around. Now on the Prezi platform, I could have voiceover and I could have this timed and I could have it play automatically. Here I'm just navigating manually. And finally, I have a section for YouTube. I haven't embedded a YouTube video, so I thought maybe we could do that together. But first, now that we've seen a few examples, I want to take a step back and talk about the concept of embedding and then show you how to do it yourself. So first of all, what is embedding? Embedding essentially is when you take an element and you put it into another element. You give it a different home. And you see examples of embedding all over in real life. Candle makers often embed things into the candles they make, whether it's leaves or shells. If you ever go to a nursery and you bring home a plant for your garden and then you plant it, then you're embedding that plant. But in Canvas, what does embedding mean? Essentially, we're taking content that's somewhere on the internet. It could be a blog post, it could be an ed tech interaction, and we want to put that into our Canvas course. Now you can embed content onto an announcement for your class, onto assignments, discussion boards, even students can embed content onto their discussion posts, or if it's just content pages, quizzes, anywhere that you see the rich content editor, you can embed the content. So let's talk at a high level about what the embed code looks like. Here's the breakdown of the embed code. I'm going to start out with an iframe. And this example here is probably the most basic embed code that you could see. But I want to take a look at what are the essential components. First of all, we have an iframe. The iframe tells the Canvas course that outside content will be placed right here, whether that's an image, whether that's a Padlet or a Sway or a YouTube video. Next, we'll want to define how tall and how wide is this element. So the width and the height tell Canvas how tall and wide in pixels the content will be. Now you can define it in other units such as percentages, but pixels is a very common measurement for embedding content into Canvas. And finally, the SRC, the source, lets Canvas know where the content is coming from. And it's always going to be a website, a URL of some sort. It's something that lives on the internet and we're bringing it into Canvas. 
So we're not uploading it into Canvas. It doesn't belong in Canvas or live in Canvas. It lives somewhere else, but we're pulling it into our Canvas course. So where exactly do you get embed code? You can get embed code from a myriad of ed tech platforms. They usually give it to you and you just need to know where to look for that embed code. Now the platform could be YouTube or ThingLink or Flipgrid or VoiceThread. Even blog posts and news articles might allow you to embed their content. And you'll typically look for some kind of symbol that either says share or embed. And you might have to click the share link to get to the embed code. You're going to look for this symbol that is two chevrons with a slash in between. And astute observers might actually notice that our logo for how to canvas integrates embed code right into it in the form of a graduation cap. Now what does embed code look like? We looked at the most fundamental line of embed code a moment ago, but in reality it might look different depending on where you're getting the embed code. And most of the time you just want to find the source of the embed code. They'll give you some embed code because they want you to put their content on other platforms. And all you'll do is copy and paste that. You'll copy the code that they give you and you'll paste it onto your Canvas course. And again, the vast majority of the time the embed code is going to be some sort of iframe. Not always, but most of the time. So let's hop back over to our Canvas course and let's pull back the curtain a little bit. I'm going to go to the edit and I'm going to hop over to the HTML editor so that we can see the embed code. Now the first example we had was a sway and here is the example for the sway. I have an iframe and all I did was copy the content that they gave me. So if I hop back out of here, sway is interesting because I can actually access the share link from the embedded content. And when I go to my Sway, then I can notice in the top right corner, I have the share button. And here I want to get the embed code. And all I would do is copy this from the clipboard. And then I'd go back to Canvas and I would paste it. Now there's two ways to paste the embed code into Canvas. What you don't want to do is just paste it right in the rich content editor because it's going to look like the iframe and it's not going to be interactive. So instead what you want to do, one way is in the rich content editor, you can click on the embed icon right here and that allows you to paste in the code. And when I submit that and bump this up to full screen, I can see a mini interaction right where I pasted it. Now the other way would be to go into the HTML editor, which for me personally, that's my preferred way, but I also appreciate the rich content editor way. And then I would want to know where exactly am I going to put that iframe in this case, I would paste it in right here. And if you want to give yourself a leg up when if the HTML editor is a little daunting, which I completely understand that it could be, you can go in here and you can put a placeholder for where you want the content to be. So if I want to paste my sway right here where the letter A is repeated, then I'll find that and I can see here's the paragraph with the letter A and let me paste in the code right there. So this is the iframe. And when I back out to the rich content editor, then I can see the content is embedded right there. Delete that real quick and let's look now at Padlet. So Padlet is the next one that we have. When I hop over to Padlet, I can click on the share button and then I can see embed in your blog or your website. In this case, I want to embed into Canvas. And so this is the link that I paste. Now you don't have to know exactly what's going on here. That's a bunch of alphanumeric HTML gibberish. All I need to know is that I need to copy this code and then in Canvas, I need to place it where I want it. And so for here example, I might place it in between this text. And I know it's gonna look silly because I already have a Padlet right there, but I'm going to go to this embed link and I'm going to paste it right there and submit. And there's my Padlet. The other way to do that would have been to go into the HTML editor. Now I can see that that Padlet I just added is right here, so I'm gonna delete that and then what I would do is paste it. All right, now when I bump this up to full screen, I can see there's my original Padlet and here's my second Padlet that I created. And I showed you this to let you know that you can have text, you can have pictures, and you can have embedded content. It can live right with your other content. You can put it in between paragraphs of text and that's really an advantage to using embedded content. All right, I just deleted all those changes because there's one thing that I want to do with you and that's at the very bottom, I have a section for YouTube and I even have a link to the YouTube video that I want to add. So let's add that together. I'm gonna go ahead and go to this link, go to the YouTube video that I want. I'm gonna click the share button and then I'm gonna click embed. And so here's the embed code. Now YouTube gives me a few options. I can choose to show or hide the player controls 
and I think that's fine. I'll keep the player controls visible and you can also start it at a certain time. You can say I want to start this at 2 minutes and 37 seconds or 2 minutes and 12 seconds and it'll actually change the code so that it starts when you want it to start. And that's convenient in the course if there's a relevant part of a lecture that you want to share with the class but it might be some minutes into the lecture and so you want to embed it so that it starts right at the point that you want the students to see and so you can skip the intro. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. I'm going to copy that and we're going to head back over to Canvas. Now I have this code and I'm just going to delete that and I want to put my YouTube video right here, right in, underneath the dark text and on top of this text block right here. So I can go click on the embed code link and I'm going to paste the code and submit it. So there's my video. If I wanted to put it underneath this text, then I can do that. Let's show the HTML way to do that. And I know that this is at the very bottom of the page. And so I'm just going to click underneath this paragraph and I will paste it right here. So now I have two videos and let's go ahead and save that and see what it looks like. So just reviewing, I have an entire page full of all kinds of embedded content. We have a Sway, Padlet, we have a 360 thing link. We have an interactive ed puzzle video. We have a parallax image. We have this mini course from H5P and the Prezi, and then we have the YouTube with two videos. And we'll pretend like these are two different videos, not the same videos. And you can see that they're totally interactive. And that's how you can insert dynamic content into your courses. I think that once you really learn how to embed content well into your courses, it really changes the way you do course design and how you teach your classes. Because my thought is that even though all these courses are on the internet, they're not really part of the internet. And part of that is just because we have usernames and passwords and FERPA and all of this. And so I think this is an opportunity for us to really bring content from the internet into our classes to make it more of an immersive multimedia experience and really engage students. And I think embedded content can really enhance teaching and learning. So now that you've watched this video, you are now an expert and a pro at embedding content. I do want to invite you, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe and sign up for notifications. I have new content coming out all the time, and I really want to help teachers to enhance their classroom skills and abilities in Canvas. Visit us on social media, and you can also read the blog post that's associated with this video on how to embed content into Canvas. Everyone, I will see you next time, and happy teaching and learning!